Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. <laughs> Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Morning, folks. It's funny, I'm still waiting for the squeak. The squeak's gone. Um, <laughs> great subject line, constipated cats. <laughs> Well, it was one of the 91 things that I was asked to talk about by the supporters. So, um, and they uh, wanted to know from a TCDM perspective uh, what the cause is as well. And um, good morning, Kim Dirksen. Uh, constipated cats is actually one of my favorite referrals. Um, and, and it used to be one of my least favorite referrals because I have to tell you, there is nothing worse than deobstipating a constipated cat. Um, it usually requires sedation because, as you might imagine, it's a little painful. Um, high. This is a good breakfast topic, by the way. Uh, high warm water enemas with stool softeners. Um, it smells up the entire clinic for the entire day, and there's not a darn thing you can do about it. We usually get covered in the filth, and there's not a darn thing we can do about it. Uh, it it's just, it's just not fun. Not fun at all. And then I, I feel really bad for the kitty cats. And um, in my 36-year history, I did have one doctor uh, that worked for me that did manage to tear the rectum of a cat in getting them unblocked. And uh, it's, it's not that uncommon. Uh, so the, the big key here is don't let your cats get into this position. Um, megacolon is one of those things where basically if you have a cat who has had repeated problems uh, with being constipated, uh, that bowel, that large bowel is being stretched all the time because it's overly full and uh, it'll do ne nerve damage. And so then we have a colon that just doesn't push things through anymore. It's a flaccid large vessel that everything gets stuck in. Um, and so a lot of these cats in the past, the way that we've had to treat them is with something called lactulose, which is basically a liquid stool softener. It needs to be given usually three times a day. Cats don't really like it. You're shoving, you know, volumes of liquid down them, uh, stool softener. We also have used DSS, which is a kind of a detergent stool softener that comes in a capsule. Um, but basically when we're doing that, we're treating the symptom, we're not treating the cause. And the cause, particularly from a Chinese medicine perspective, is a yin, a large intestine yin and qi deficiency. So we've got a lack of movement, which is the qi, the energy, we've got a lack of movement pushing the stool through, and we have a yin deficiency, which means it's too dang dry. So how do we fix it? Well, how about we give them more moisture, and then we give them something that's a good qi tonic. And food really is the solution here, guys. Food is the solution. And interestingly, in the past, I've seen uh, you know cats for referrals, and the veterinarian's uh, or owner's choice to treat it was to add more fiber. Well, okay, great. Now we're increasing the bulk of the stool and drying it out even more. That's the exact opposite of what needs to be done. So 
as with anything with cats, it's about moisture, 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 and a little more moisture. Cats are desert animals. They are not big drinkers. Unless you salt their food pretty heavily, they're not big drinkers. So, and that's why the urinary diets work because they've got extra salt in them and they have acidifiers in them, but it makes the cat drink more. So the solution to this problem, just like the solution to urinary crystals and lower urinary tract disease in cats, oh gee, we're talking about the lower end of the cat, moisture. So we're gonna feed them either a raw high moisture diet or we're going to feed them a canned high moisture diet. We've gotta get moisture in. Some of these cats are so bad and so dry, especially older cats in kidney failure, that sub-Q fluids are added on in addition. So if I can get owners to, I, I, so funny, I clearly remember years ago having a cat that was so constipated and they'd been working on this with, for years with their other vet. And I remember the people, for, for whatever reason, they, they must have come a long distance because they sat in our parking lot and waited and it was summer and it was way before we had to worry about things like COVID. Uh, but we had to sedate the cat and get it cleared out. And these people had an SUV and they had the back hatch up and they were sitting out there, you know, having lunch and just hanging out all day waiting for us to finish working on their cat and getting things cleared out. And um, when we were done with it, I, you know, clearly they were feeding it dry food and they were, you know, adding fiber and all the things they'd been told to do. And I said, guys, the key here is moisture. We're going to switch this cat to, we're going to put on some stool softeners to start because we don't want it to get stuck right back up again. And then we're going to put this cat on a high moisture diet. That cat never had a problem again. They had fought it for years and the cat never had a problem again. We also have great herbals that we can add. The biggest problem, as we all know, is getting things into cats. So we have herbals that are, um, the, the thing with herbs is they're basically food therapy because it's a plant, most of the time. It's a plant that we put in a very concentrated form and give it to the kitties. And uh, it's basically an herb that targets the large intestine and is a yin and chi tonic. So this is not, I mean, it, it makes perfect sense when you really <laughs> think about it. I don't know what he's whining about. Uh, it makes perfect sense when you think about it. If we, you know, keep things moving through and if we keep things moistened and lubricated, they move through. Uh, now we do see more problems in older cats. Like I said, kidney failure cats who are chronically dehydrated. Um, big fat old arthritic cats who don't posture in their litter box often enough because they're painful to posture and strain in the litter box. So if you've got arthritis problems, you've got to get those kitties on some pain meds and get that problem solved as well. If you have a cat with uh, chronic kidney failure who's dehydrated all the time, one, you need moisture in the diet and two, you may need to add sub-Q fluids to that as well. So, um, these cats don't have to be chronically obstructed. They don't have to have chronic problems. Now, if we have a kitty cat that has nerve damage to the spine and damage to the nerves that innervate the large intestine, yes, maybe those guys, we've got to keep them on noxulose or something like that to keep things moving. We do have one cat in, in one of our practices that uh, even with the high moisture diet and everything being done right, he's got some nerve damage. And so every once in a while he does have to get cleaned out. So. Um, you know, there are some things we can fix and some things we can't fix, but really the key is manage pain, manage fluids and keep things moving through these guys. Okay. I got to go to work. Yeah. I know those dumb auto feeders and, uh, the, the toys now that they're making for the cats where basically you put all their dry kibble in the toy and they play with it and roll it around and eat and I, You know, somebody wanted me to endorse one of those. I'm like, why would I endorse that? That's like the worst thing in the world. <laughs> no kibble for kitties. Can people take this herb asking for a friend? <laughs> yeah, actually, you can. Uh, I mean, all the herbs, it's, it's food. Human grade food. Uh, and I bet if you look on some of the TCM, traditional Chinese medicine websites, uh, that a lot of the acupuncturists and herbals put up, you, you can find those things um, pretty easily. Uh, pumpkin can help, uh, for sure, with the dogs. Again, moisture. And pumpkin's a chi tonic. 
It has a lot of good properties. Works for some, doesn't for others. From Wales. That's why your name is spelled with no vowels. <laughs> when I was in Wales trying to read the street signs, they would put them in English and also in uh, Welsh, whatever. Like, is that? Yeah. Weird. It's pretty, very cool. Say it back. 